Good morning. We're here again to read about the human body and the human body systems. We're doing a quick overview of several of the systems. We started with the skeletal system and we're moving on to the muscular system today. You can tell that by looking at our narrator's t-shirt. Who is our narrator? That's right. The narrator is somebody who's in the story, <coughs> excuse me, who is telling this story. In this case, it's Ricardo. And Ricardo's been telling us about how various human body systems are interconnected, how um, we have bones that are connected to, to each other with tendons, and we have um, bones that are protected from other bones when we have um, cartilage on the end of it. So ligaments help keep bones together. It's very interesting and interconnected, many different components to each of these different systems. So um, in which system are the bones located? It has a particular name. Do you remember? The skeletal system. You're right. It's the skeletal system. And there are different types of joints in our skeletal system. We have movable joints, which is just like what you would think it would be. They move. We have immovable. That's one of your prefixes. Im means not, not movable, immovable. And partially, partially means partly, partially movable. And can you explain why cartilage and ligaments are important to the skeletal system? You'll need to be able to do that. Cartilage is little slippery cushions in between bones that make sure that they don't grind upon one another and wear down. Ligaments attach to bones um, and help to keep the bones together. So. Ligaments are like lines that help keep them together. They can be tough bands, like very tough rubber bands. And there are many different types of cells that make up tissue. Cells are the what of life. That should be a familiar phrase by now. Cells are the building blocks of life, of all life. So today we're going to be learning about different types of muscles in the human body. And um, so listen carefully to find out how the muscle system, the muscular system, is interconnected with the skeletal system. Because remember, all of our systems are interconnected. You ever think of yourself as a big muscle, collection of muscles running down the road? This guy looks late or he's hungry and he's going to lunch. Okay. Hi guys, it's me, Ricardo. Last time we were together, I told you that our next discussion would be about a system that works extremely well with your skeletal system. Did you predict what the name of the system would be? If you predicted the muscular system, then you are correct. You've learned how the bones in your skeletal system are connected from head to toe. Bones form the important framework of your body, but they could not move without the help of your muscles. So if you had a skeleton with no muscles, it would be fine. You would just lay there, wouldn't go anywhere, couldn't move. What are muscles? Well, the word muscle comes from Latin and it means it's the Latin word musculus. Muscles are made up of bundles of long, thin cells. They are controlled by signals that come from your brain and spinal cord, which carry messages through nerves to every part of your body. Muscles receive these messages, telling them when to contract or tighten, how to contract and for how long. When muscles contract, they squeeze together, shortening and causing movement. Muscles are at work in your body 
all the time, even when you're sleeping. You have more than 650 muscles in your body, making up to one third to one half of your body weight. Hmm. There are three types of muscles in your body. Oh, there were three types of joints too. Hmm. But most of them are skeletal muscles. Your skeletal muscles work closely with your bones to give you mobility or motion. Just as there are axial bones and appendicular bones, there are axial muscles and appendicular muscles. Which muscles do you think are axial muscles? That's right, the ones that are in your head and your neck and your torso in the middle part of your body, like an axis of the earth goes through the middle of the earth. Your axial muscles are attack attached to axial bones in the middle of your body. Which are appendicular muscles? That's right, the ones in your arms and legs. Most muscles work in pairs. A pair has two. Most muscles work in pairs. Muscles only pull on bone. They cannot push. Oh my goodness. Let me read that again because that is so important to know. Muscles work in pairs. Muscles only pull. They cannot push. As your muscles pull on bones, they contract or get shorter. In order to relax or lengthen, muscles need a partner to pull the bone in the opposite direction. Paired muscles never pull in this at the same time. One pulls, the other relaxes. One relaxes, the other pulls. Look at this picture of the muscles in your upper arm. It shows what happens when you make a fist and bend your arm. The bicep muscle contracts and bends your elbow while your tricep muscle in the back relaxes. When you straighten your arm out again, your tricep muscle contracts and your bicep muscle relaxes. By working in pairs, taking turns, pulling on your bones, skeletal muscles enable you to ride a bike, play the guitar, or climb a mountain. Skeletal muscles come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, fat and skinny, long and circular. Because you control your skeletal muscles, deciding when and how you want to move your bones, they are called voluntary muscles. The movement does not happen automatically. You make a conscious decisions to move the muscles attached to your bones. Those are voluntary muscles the muscles that you make a conscious decision to move. Narrow rope-like tissues called tendons attached bones to muscle. You can see the tendons under your skin if you flex your arm back and forth. Try it, bend your elbow, as if you want to show off your muscles and feel the tendon just under the skin on the inside of your elbow. What are other good places to view your tendons in action? Well, try looking up your neighbor's neck. Can you find the tendons as he turns his head? You might have to ask your mom or your grandma or your little baby brother to do that. Can you find tendons in your arms or legs? The muscles in your legs are the largest and strongest skeletal muscles in your whole body. One of the muscles is your calf muscle. You can feel your calf muscle at the back of your lower leg. Your calf muscle is responsible for much of your movement, helping you bend your knee when you walk or run. It is attached to your heel bone by the longest and most powerful tendon in your whole body, the Achilles tendon. You see it? So this is your calf muscle. You can see the tendon back here. It's attached to your heel, which is part of your foot. So this Achilles tendon attaches the muscle to the bone of the heel. You can see it there. If your Achilles tendon is torn or cut, the use of that leg for jumping and running is lost immediately 
until it heals. An ancient Greek legend has long been told about the Achilles tendon. You remember last year? You learned about Achilles. Where was the only place that he was vulnerable? Mmm, his heel. That's right. So we talk about the Achilles tendon as a figurative phrase to indicate our weak spots, places where we feel most likely to be hurt, either physically or emotionally. So Achilles tendon is named after the legend from Achilles in ancient Greece. Remember? The myth goes something like this. Long ago in ancient Greece, a baby was born. According to custom, his mother held him by the heel and dipped his body in the river Styx. It was thought that the waters of this powerful river could make a person invincible or unable to be defeated in battle. Achilles grew up to be a warrior, and indeed, the river's power seemed to protect him from injury throughout many battles. However, ooh, there's one of those transition words that says we're changing direction. There was one spot on his body that the water had not touched. That was the spot where his mother had held him, Achilles' heel. He was finally killed when an arrow pierced his heel, his one vulnerable spot. From then on, people have referred to their own area of weakness as their Achilles' heel. Poor Achilles. It's a shame that he wasn't wearing some armored footwear. Oh, well, it's only a myth. Let's move on and learn about other types of muscles in your body. In addition to skeletal muscles, you have other types of muscles in your body. There are smooth muscle and cardiac muscle. Okay, here's another riddle. I am a muscle, and like music, I have rhythm and a beat. I am protected by the rib cage. What am I? Does anyone know what type of muscle is contained in your heart? Smooth muscle or cardiac muscle? Your thick, powerful heart is made of cardiac muscle, the strongest muscle in your whole body found only in your heart. Let me say that again. Your heart is made of, you can see it right here, cardiac muscle. It's the only place that we find cardiac muscle. In fact, you call the heart the cardiac muscle because of the name of the muscle cells. Unlike skeletal muscles that are attached to your skeleton, healthy cardiac muscle never gets tired. It is continually contracting and relaxing, rhythmically pumping blood around your body all day long and all night long. Cardiac muscle is an involuntary muscle. Ooh, nice prefix in, which means not. So it's not voluntary, meaning that you do not control its movement. Your brain controls how fast your heart beats without you even thinking about it. Why do you think that is important? If you had to think about your heart beating all the time, day and night, would you ever be able to get any sleep? No. It would be, you wouldn't be able to do anything else except remind your heart to keep beating because that would be a voluntary muscle. When you want to pick up your pencil, you think about picking up your pencil and that thought is turned into an electrical impulse, which goes down your nerves and you pick up your pencil because you've told that voluntary muscle to pick up your pencil. If you had to think about that all the time concerning your cardiac muscle and keeping your heart beating, you wouldn't be able to do anything else day and night. You'd never be able to sleep. <clears throat> Smooth muscle is the third type of muscle, and here it is right here. It is also involuntary because you cannot consciously move smooth muscle. It contracts exactly like skeletal muscles do, only much more slowly. Lining the walls of internal organs and blood vessels, smooth muscle 
uses less energy than skeletal muscles. It squeezes and tightens, mixing and churning food in the stomach, and it lines your lungs and your blood vessels too. So you have more and heavier skeletal muscles, but they may not be the most important muscles. Cardiac muscle must keep contracting and relaxing day and night. And your smooth muscles control your digestive tract and other parts of your uh, body inside your circulatory system, inside your blood vessels. The next time we meet, we'll talk about systems that control all your other body systems. This system controls the voluntary and the involuntary muscles in your body and much more. I think you can look at his t-shirt and guess what system it is. Haha, <laughs> you're right. So let's go back and discuss the muscular system. There are some questions you'll need to know the answers to these questions. What are muscles made of? Bundles of long, thin cells. Why is the muscular system important to the human body? Well, it helps the body move and do other things that we can't see, like the stomach and intestines digesting food and the heart pumping blood. The muscular system also provides a framework of the human body together with the skeletal system. If you did not have a skeletal system and a muscular system working together, you would not be able to move. If you only had a muscular system, you'd be a nice little blob of whatever sitting on the floor. You couldn't go anywhere. There would be nothing for your muscles to pull on for you to move forward. If you were only a skeletal system without the muscles, you couldn't go anywhere because there would be nothing to pull on. So you would have some shape, but you would have no way to move. So muscle system, the muscular system, and the skeletal system must work together for you to be able to move. When muscles contract, what do they do? They squeeze together. They get shorter and they cause movement because they're pulling on some bone. In the read aloud, you heard that the muscles work in pairs. What does that mean? <clears throat> Because muscles can only pull on bone, one muscle needs to pull on a bone in the opposite direction when it wants to move. So one muscle pulls while the other relaxes. The paired muscle relaxes while the other pulls. So they take turns pulling. Muscles never push. Muscles can only pull. So first I need one muscle pulling and then that one would relax and another muscle will pull that same bone in a different direction. What attaches bones to muscles? Tendons. What's the longest and most powerful tendon in the body? The Achilles tendon. And what happens if damage is done to that Achilles tendon? Well, you would not be able to move your leg for running or jumping at all until that tendon can heal, which can take a long time. According to the Greek myth, why was Achilles' heel vulnerable? It was the only part of his body that the water in the river Styx did not touch. You're right. Okay, to compare and contrast something. To compare it is to tell how it is the same. You might hear the words both, together, okay? Also, if you're going to contrast something, you might use the words but, different, um, instead of, okay? So we're going to compare and contrast things throughout this entire unit. You'll need to get really good at finding, comparing, and contrasting words in sentences and being able to use them as you write sentences and paragraphs.
Okay. If you compare and contrast voluntary and involuntary muscles, you might say they are both muscles in the human body. That's a compare statement, both. Here's a contrast sen sentence. Voluntary muscles do not move automatically, but involuntary muscles move automatically when your brain tells them to move. You have to make a decision to move a voluntary muscle. Involuntary muscles move automatically without needing to think about moving them. Can you name examples of voluntary and involuntary muscles? Well, your voluntary muscles are your skeletal muscles. So any type of movement that you decide to do, moving your legs, moving your arms, twisting, jumping, any of those kinds of movements are voluntary movements with your skeletal muscles. Cardiac muscles, your heart beating, and your intestinal system, and your um, circulatory system are involuntary. So these type of muscles are involuntary. These muscles are voluntary. In prefix means not. So voluntary, not voluntary. What other systems are interconnected with the muscular system? We talked a little about that. The skeletal system is to get any type of movement with a muscle, you have to have some type of um, skeleton attached to it with tendons. But the nervous system is also interconnected with the muscular system. That's how you tell your body to do something. Your brain and the nervous system tells your voluntary muscles that you want to do something and then you can do it. Sometimes you have to practice, then you get better at it. Sometimes your muscles give good messages back to your brain and tells you how to um, tweak your movement so that you can get better. That happens when you take dance classes, that happens when you take music classes. Your brain tells your muscles and then your muscles give feedback to your brain so that you can learn to get better at something. Um, can you compare and contrast tendons and ligaments? Well, both tendons and ligaments, ding, 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 both is a compare statement. Both tendons and ligaments are part of the body made of stretchy tissue. Now here's a contrast statement. Tendons attach muscle to bone. Whereas, that's going to be, this is a different statement, so you're sort of changing direction in your thought. We were going along thinking about tendons, then we're going to change direction and talk about ligaments. Listen to it again. Tendons attach muscle to bone, whereas ligaments hold bones together at the joints. That's a really important distinction. Distinction is a word that you would use when you are contrasting something. Listen again. Tendons attach muscle to bone, whereas ligaments hold bones together. So they attach bone to bone at a joint. Why do you think it's important that there are voluntary and involuntary muscles in your body? Boy, we could go, we could write a book about that. That's an important question with a lot of answers to it. Why do you think it's important that there are voluntary and involuntary? So next time we're going to talk about the nervous system. Really cool.